All right, we're finally ready to see this awesome application of distance modulus. This is like such a big deal when we look at supernovas. So we've already seen that if we can somehow figure out the intrinsic brightness of a star, its absolute magnitude, and we compare that to its apparent magnitude, that is how bright it looks in our sky, then it's simply a matter of a, a relatively simple calculation for professional astronomers um, to calculate how far away it must be, right? You just, the further away that star is, the fainter it's gonna look. So um, if we know how bright it is and we know how bright it looks, we've got the distance. Now, we've seen that for some nearby stars, there are lots of ways for us to figure out its absolute magnitude. Like for Cepheids, we can we can look at its um, its variability, right? The the period of its variation actually relates to its absolute magnitude. So we can get that information. But supernovas are awesome, especially type one supernovas, because we understand the physics really well, and they're enormously bright explosions. So in this picture we saw, this is a, a galaxy that's super far away, but we can see that individual star explode and we can measure its brightness. And because we know the physics of what's happening inside that star and these type one supernovas all have that same physics happening, we can calibrate this and find the distance to an entire different galaxy, right? A galaxy that may be on the other side of the universe, which in fact astronomers have been able to do. It's one of the most important ways that we measure distances across the whole universe. So I have this really cool little illustration simulation to kind of show this. So a type one supernova experiences a curve that looks like this, all right? And it gets really, really bright and then it gets fainter and gradually fainter and fainter and fainter. Now, typically astronomers are discovering them somewhere in this area, right? We don't often see it as it's getting brighter, but you can see this this curve, this red curve is locked to the absolute magnitude because again, the physics of what happens in these type one supernovae is the same every time. And so the uh, peak absolute magnitude is gonna be about minus 19.5 every single time. But what's gonna be different is how bright that uh, star, that explosion, that supernova looks in our night sky. And so what I can do here is I can actually grab some data, real astronomical data of a, a supernova. So I'm going to do 1995D. All right. And you can actually see that I can drag this data. Now, these were actual observations of the brightness of that star in its apparent magnitude. So it peaked at an apparent magnitude of about 13. All right. That's too faint to see with your eyes. But I can drag this around and you'll see it lies almost exactly on that curve. And that's amazing. This red line is like comes from the physics of our understanding of these stars and the blue are these actual observations. Now what's really cool about this then is that simply by lining this data up to the prediction, I can get the distance modulus, which again gives me the actual distance to this galaxy or at least to the supernova. So what I can do is just line this up here. And in this particular case, uh, once I've lined up my data just right, I can see that uh, anywhere I put this, it's relating my absolute magnitude to my apparent magnitude. And that difference, I'll put it right at the peak, right there, just for a round number, negative 19.6 and 13.4. So little m minus big M, right? That's my distance modulus. In this case, I'm not good at subtractions with negatives and stuff, but that would be 13.4 plus 19.6 the distance modulus would be 33. So that, that would be for that particular supernova, but I could do this with lots of different data. And you see, it's, it's a pretty simple thing to find that distance modulus. So I'm gonna do this for another supernova. This is 1998AQ, and I'm gonna ask you about this one in the, in the lab. So I line that up. And you see, it doesn't fit quite as exactly, but you can still get it pretty close. And I am going to uh, match this one up as well get as close as I can. And we'll see that the distance modulus here, you, I'm gonna ask you to calculate it. My apparent magnitude is 12.4. Then I'm gonna subtract the negative 19.5 to find my absolute magnitude. And then of course, from that, from that distance modulus, the distance of this galaxy could be found. 
So I hope that makes sense and I hope you see how this, 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 this idea of distance modulus can be applied in so many different ways and can help us measure distances nearby and very far away.